last time I could feel that power in my head The speed of the drums rushing through my skin Don't jump shot. T putting it on the floor. Teddy! To attack. Getting all the way to the basket off the glass. And one. It's retro night here in Manchester, but there'll be more than memories and nostalgia. On the agenda tonight, the Giants host the Phoenix as a Northwest Derby Shore, but both teams looking to finish this season on a roll. Welcome to Friday Night Basketball here on Sky Sports. Drew Lasker, Kieran Achara, present and correct Drew Lasker. I know you love a bit of retro night. Well, they got the Will Smith summertime playing in the background. <laughs> Above back the all-90s denim. The 90s is the best era. He pulls off the denim, of course. <laughs> See the neat Achara uh, 20 jerseys kicking around. I have not, but this is a frugal shirt from the 90s. You know, I've kept this one. It's, a, it's my own retro fit. <laughs> Both done me proud, I can tell you that. Right, it's all about the playoffs at this stage with London taking the title last week in a particular. It's all about the fourth seed, London taking care of business. In the end, it was a tougher game than we figured against Surrey last week, but an impressive performance from them in the end. That's what champions do. And, of course, a record-breaking performance from London. No team has won the title this early on in proceedings, which means with a month and change left, of the regular season we're turning our attention to the playoff race and in particular drew laska the race for fourth which these two teams have their eyes on yeah it's always great finishing top four which both teams are in a position to do so but a slide can see both of them fall to seven so tonight is a very both important game for both clubs it's interesting for cheshire isn't it after that heartbreaking defeat against Caledonia in the trophy final couple of weeks back they've bounced back really well haven't they it shows the spirit in this side yeah it's that real grip you know, that they have that, you know you've got that larry austin you know, he epitomizes grip but they found a way you know, a blowout win against the newcastle eagles and then followed it up uh you know a real tough game against the sheffield sharks it's shown that they can still win and and, and and remain with hope cheshire a gritty team manchester the great entertainers aren't they it is always a roller coaster when we watch them oh man if you like offense then this is the game to watch you know manchester they like to play in the 90s the hundreds and they like to fill it up the new era of basketball all right then well despite uh, that loss uh, sorry, uh, despite the uh, win on Friday night, London then lost to Bristol on Friday. It didn't matter, of course, for the title cemented, but that was a big win for Bristol in their race for the second seed. They're up against Leicester because the top three are clear of everybody else. The Riders beat the Flyers last Friday. That actually helped London win the title, but their battle for second place is going to go to the wide. You can count on that. The Giants, well, they currently occupy that fourth spot. The Gladiators and the Phoenix in the mix as well. Sheffield are going to make the cut as well. So in terms of the final playoff spot, and Newcastle still in the race, you still got hope through. You must be. You like this now, but well, Newcastle are two games behind uh, Plymouth, and Plymouth plays Surrey tomorrow, so I see that picking up. And although both teams play each other the final game of the season, I got some news for you. And Kieran, don't tell anybody. Deja vu. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, just looking at that playoff lineup, obviously London are going to be favourites. The Riders are going to be tough. Give us a quick dark horse. Which team can you see being a dangerous proposition in the playoffs? Manchester Giants are right there, you know, and Bristol, Bristol Flyers are obviously flying, flying high, so two dark horses. I'm impartial, so I won't mention the Caledonia Gladiators. <laughs> Very wise. Uh, the uh, great entertainers, as we described them, because they lead the league in offence in the BBL right now, but they're second last in defence, so we can expect a lot of points. Look at their starting five. Is it fair to say that it matches up with any starting five Drew in the BBL right now, but they're... The, depth of the bench is their real issue. Well, you just hit it there. That's the issue with the Manchester Giants is they don't have anyone to back up that stellar five, which if you look at the resumes, you look at talent, it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in the league. Vince McCauley, their vastly experienced head coach, 
How much edge will that give the Giants in the, in the playoffs, considering how much action he's seen postseason? Well, we've seen it, done it, we've got the T-shirt, so a, a, a player can really step up. All right, there is Vince uh, looking resplendent in customised jerseys that the match the Giants have got uh, in the house for Retro Night tonight. Now, there's Taj Green. What a season he is having. An electrifying player, I guess, through. He personifies this match the Giants side. And unless you've been living under a rock, I know you've seen that throw off the glass slam dunk. And when you think about all true rookies in our league, he is the most impactful player. Dirk Williams. We managed to have two players in the top five in scoring in the BBL. Taj is the first. And Dirk Williams, unsurprisingly, Kieran is the other. Mr. Efficient knows how to put the ball in the basket, but also has really stepped up his defense last season, you know, learning in, in London Lions. Romaldo Fletcher Drew, somebody you know all about, of course, he played alongside him for so many years. How, how did he elevate your game? How does he elevate the game of players around him, particularly offensive? Because he makes the game easier. And at 34 years old, I keep waiting for the descent, but the last five years, he's leading the league in assists, and you might as well just say, bad. <laughs> William was that a William. sheep? Was that a sheep or a goat? That I, don't <laughs> I think it was. I think it was a goat. You know it what it was. Goat. Okay, William Lee. Just for balance here, William Lee. Well, he's strong offensively as well, of course, but brings so much defensively. Missed a chunk of the season with injury. So, Kieran, how crucial is his fitness to their playoff chances? They need that depth, you know, and he, he brings it in, a, in abundance. You know, he's a player. He's a, an X factor to this team. All right, then. That is the all-star Manchester Giants. We love seeing them, but. Hey, if we're talking about explosive effervescent sides, then Cheshire are right up there, losing that trophy final in that fashion. The buzzer beat to Drew. How long does it take to get over something like that? Well, the good thing about the British Basketball League, games come thick and fast, and you want that next game to come as soon as possible. And Friday it was for Cheshire, and they got the job done, and now they can put it behind them. How impressive is it, Kieran, that they were within seconds of winning back-to-back -back trophies when you consider their budget compared to the likes of, say, the London Lions? You know, Charlotte Community Club, you know, they're a great club who, who know exactly what it takes to get to those finals. So, you know, it's great to see that they're, they're still, still competing at a high level. We well, talked about them as being a gritty side. They also love to play explosively. Fast break is very much their ammo. They convert points off turnovers. Marcus Evans has been instrumental in that game plan. And since that trophy final, he's been balling a career high 34 points. And he's hit eight three, uh, four threes in the last two games. And the last time he scored more than four threes was October 10th, 2021. Ooh. Doing your research on Retro Night, Drew Lasker. Uh, Larry Austin Jr., his partner in crime, who leads the league in steel 66 and counting leads the team in boards what an explosive player he is explosive player you no know, he's had you know, a lot of bumps and bruises along the way but he just keeps going you know a great player for this organization Jamel Anderson a vastly experienced player I guess that experience is essential in getting the team up after the trophy loss absolutely you need that and who would have thought five years ago Jamel Anderson would have been leading the team in three-point percentage but that just goes to show of his maturity his professionalism David Oath, the last player that we want to highlight because he's very much next man up here isn't he no Will Neighbour no Teague tonight so he's being lent on in recent games is he delivering He's starting to, you know, he does all the dirty work. He doesn't need the ball. He goes and finds the ball, you know, offensive rebounds, getting under the basket, pick and roll. So it's great to see him getting back healthy. Are we expecting, Drew, a game at breakneck pace tonight? Well, every time we come here, it seems to be so. And so it's going to be important for Cheshire to be able to rowl up stops and continue to score because we know Manchester's going to fill it up. They've got to keep toe to toe. Uh, it is interesting when you think about timing in the playoff race, isn't it, Kieran? Because the Giants, we've suggested, are going to be dangerous all season long if and when they make the playoffs. But what kind of form have they been in as you get set for the playoffs? Form is everything. It's momentum. You know, you, you want that momentum. You want to keep you know, striving forward. And both teams want to have that positive feel. All right, then. Well, Drew uh, caught up with both head coaches a little bit earlier on to get their perspective on tonight's crucial game. Coach, six wins out of your last nine games. You feel like you're hitting your stride? Yeah, I'd like to think we are from a sort of a mental thought process on the floor and that kind of stuff. I and mean, we keep getting held back by injuries. I think like everybody else, it's like you think you're rolling one direction, you go and do something else. But from an overall, how are we playing? What are we actually trying to achieve? I think we're very much going in the right direction.
in the se- season series with Cheshire could prove vital in the playoff push and push in the top four finish. How important is tonight? Oh, this is huge because they beat us two times in their place, even though we got the first one here uh, in that spectacular Sky game. Uh, but they've shown that they're a resilient team. I feel like uh, what Coach uh, Ben has done is, uh, you know, really build a team that wants to play together. You, you know, irrespective of what happened in the trophy final, they stayed together. I think they're a very dangerous team. And moving beyond this, what are the expectations moving into the playoffs for yourself? You know, it's a tough one. I mean, you know, Giants, you know, it's a big organization in terms of what it's done in the past. Um, you know, we're here to try and, you know, build things up and get it back to where it needs to be. The people think we should be right at the top because we've got people like Fletcher and Williams. But it takes time to build that kind of, you know, successful, I don't want to say dynasty because we're not looking that far. But, you know, that's that, that group together. Um, and I think uh, we said we wanted to be above the top, top four. We're kind of there, but we've got to be in the final. And you're an OG. It's retro night. Just finally reflect a little bit on your BBL journey. Oh, my BBL journey. Oh, my goodness. Well, I've got Jimmy Brandon on my shirt here, my good friend. We played together at the Brixton Topcast before he went on to coach uh, many teams to championships in terms of Sheffield, Glasgow, uh, and obviously here in Manchester. So uh, it's not really about me. I just want to pay homage to all the guys who've done well in the BBL because, you know, we should never forget it's about the players and the coaches. And I think sometimes we go away from that. Let's honor the players and the coaches. Coach, now that you had a time to reflect, how painful was that trophy final in Glasgow? Yeah, it's hard to hard to take. Um, first time I've ever lost on the buzzer. Never mind losing in a trophy final or any final. So it's um, you know it's tough, but basketball's uh, you know probably the only sport in the world where that can happen, where the last kick or throw of a ball and you know a team can win. So you know. Um, we take pride in the performance that we, we put out there. We made a couple of mistakes down the stretch, but, you know, it's, uh, that's, the, that's the, the name of the sport, and, you know, we've got to bounce back, and we did that. And you mentioned how hard it was to pick the locker room up following that, but you must be proud of how your team has bounced back from that loss. Yeah, I mean, look, we, um, we had to sit down with each other before we went to practice on Tuesday. Um, and talked out, you know, I made everyone say their piece and how they were feeling and how they were feeling about the remaining games in the season, uh, remaining games in the season. And, you know, I thought it was good just to clear the air. Obviously, it's still fresh in everyone's memories. It's only, you know, 15 days ago, so we aren't going to forget about it too soon or less than that, 12 days ago. So we aren't going to forget about it too soon, but we've got to use that to, to fuel us going on now. And you guys officially qualified for the playoffs. What's the team mindset? <sighs> Play hard. Uh, be tough to beat, uh, defensively be aggressive. I think, you know, we're short on numbers now. Obviously, Taj went down last weekend with a season-ending injury. So, you know, we're down definitely one player. Will Neighbors still out injured. So it's just about guys stepping up. And, you know, we can sort of, again, use those as excuses of why we shouldn't play hard or whatever. Or, you know, we show that mentality that we want to be here and we want to compete. Thanks for your time, Coach. Cheers, Drew. Ben's talking about his Jimmy Brandon shirt, uh, uh, somebody who was instrumental in your career, wasn't he? Yes, I got my first start with Edinburgh Rocks, getting invited along to the, the practice with the, 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 the main players, which was a, a real, real, you know, big moment in my life and a big confidence booster to go forward. You'll be tapping up Vince for the t-shirt afterwards, that one's yes. <laughs> out of it. Let's take a look at the team head-to-head. Manchester number two in the BBL in second chance point. Cheshire are dead last in boards. That's an area I guess Vince will look to explore tonight. Absolutely. If I'm Vince, I'm saying go after the glass R because Cheshire isn't a great defensive rebounding team. You might be able to pick up a couple of scrums there. Kieran, how do you look to contain fast break speedsters like Cheshire? What will Manchester look to do to put the brakes on a little bit? Protect the ball. First and foremost, they have to protect the ball to stop, you know, uh, Cheshire loves to steal the ball. And then at the same time, take good shots. If you take better shots, they can't get out to break. I know Ramon Fletcher can, you know, take out the baseline really quickly. But if they take good shots, get back in defense, you know, it will really slow Manchester down. Uh, it is fair to say these are two of the most exciting teams to watch in the BBL right now. And there is a lot riding on tonight's game. It's our holiday cracker and it's coming next. Here's Dirk in the corner, and he strings a triple. Oh, Anderson, back door with the jam.
It's Retro Night here in Manchester. We've already seen Drew Lasker's denim and Kieran Achara's mid-90s shirt. I wonder what magic and Bro and Dan Routledge have in store for us tonight. Uh, we're just retro in general, that's that's all. Now, I've got nothing to add to that. Um, <laughs> You're very retro, Dan, three decades yeah, worth. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into the starting fives uh, for tonight's game. And William Lee back for the uh, Manchester Giants alongside the player of the month, Todd Green. Big boost having William Lee back in the equation, of course. They've got injury problems with themselves, but they've got a player of the month there, brimming with confidence in Green. And at the other end of the floor, a former Manchester player, a couple of them in fact, in the starting lineup, but a big uh, workload for Dave Oak with the injuries they've got. Jamel Anderson, of course, was a giant last year, so look for him to inflict some damage on his former employer. But rebounding is going to be key in this game. David Oak is certainly a guy that can fill that void. Well, even our officials are in retro gear tonight as we get underway. It is the Phoenix wearing the old Chester Jets uniforms. And we get us underway. And here is one of the former Giants to another Anderson for three, and that is short rebound. Lead. Orchestrating things as ever for Manchester. Williams kicks to the corner. Robinson knocks down the three. This is a team that likes to put threes, the highest in stock and volume. And it's an early introduction there for Anthony Robinson who knocks the first one down. Archibald back to Holt, the extra pass to uh, Austin, and that's his shot blocked. And Nacha to come away with it. William Lee already showing us what he can do on the interior. They're impactful, challenging shots, and Arios just wasn't able to muster up a shot there. Robinson driving hard, and the one thing uh, that Cheshire can't afford is Holt to get into foul trouble. That is the position that they are finished at in this rotation. Well, they'll be working on a seven-man rotation. You hit the nail on the head there, Dan. David Oof is a substantially big piece of that puzzle in stature and in what he does. They're going to need his strength, his size, and his rebounding tonight, so you know, he cannot afford to pick up any, any more on the foul. Robinson short on the uh, first free throw. Drew Lasker has joined us down in commentary, enjoying the retro vibe. I mean, who doesn't like the 90s? They've been jamming all pregame, and we got both teams in the old school kit. Let's just hope that the score isn't retro. I want to see it in the 100s tonight. Go right back to the beginning of the BBL. That was the most offense there was, 87-88. Was the time at which uh, well the fence went round the house really? Is Fletcher driving to the basket at the lane? Well, on uh, the side that drew up 100 points, he came to the right game. <laughs> Manchester Giants four on those points as you see. Ramon Fletcher there gliding to the basket. The finish. Archibald steps back. Cheshire with just like a couple of points right now. And the thing I worry about from Cheshire is losing Will Neighbor and Taj T. Oh! Contact. Wow, he seemed to just drive straight down the middle. Great pass there for Ramon Fletcher. Cheshire is slow to react, and Taj Green, on the other hand, is already well above the rim for the dunk finish. And it doesn't look like Green is having a player of the month hangover as he goes there and hammers it down, and we know that's what he can do. And as of late, he's been getting the three ball cooking from the top of the key, and when he has that going, he's one of the best players in this game. Well, substitutions for Cheshire. Sees Hudson and Jack into the game. Well, just some issue with the uh, scoreboard in the house, I think. They're trying to correct that. at the other end they've got two different scores on the uh, board that one says six nil the one at the other end went up to 14 and now it's gone to eight it's all over the shop oh, a little bit confusing too some back to the future stuff going on it's the retro one that's, there we go. that's delayed so are we in a time warp here or are we oh we're all on the same page now eight zero well, 
we need to bring back is little flip cards they used to have at half court where they flip over the score, give you a rough minute of where you were in the game. You ever play that role, Dan? Yeah, yeah, I've, I have done that in the past. <laughs> what well, haven't you done? <laughs> it's true, yeah. No, around a long time. Let's see if you can do it in commentary. Give, give him a flip. Give him a flip. Number flipper. What are they called, Dan? Number flipper. Flip, flip scoreboard. <laughs> Is uh, Anderton trying to get his team on the board and they finally get their first score? Well, Jamal Anderson's been the, the, the aggressive uh, aggressor of his team. No one else is really looking to, to make their mark on there. Anderson, a few early missed shots, but he replies there of the first two points of the Cheshire Phoenix. Here's ropes in the same spot he hit one earlier from. That one doesn't go. Stolen away by Dirk Williams. Dirk going to the finger roll and he lays it in. It's a nine point lead. And Dirk Williams getting to the basket and slicing and dicing after that turnover. And one thing you can't do with this Manchester Giants is give them free possessions. Anderson cutting to the hole, lays it in. He looks aggressive early and he's got four of his, of his team's points here. He's looking to carry the load as he takes oh, a Beautiful from Fletcher, but he's overcooked the lane. He wants a foul. Meanwhile, Cheshire run the other way with Austin. And he's able to score. How good is he at that? Open floor, players on his body, doesn't matter. Larry Austin Jr., he is the best in the league at this. And when he's in transition, you might as well just flip the score card over <laughs> the two points. <laughs> flip away, Dad, flip away. <laughs> Here's Dirk Williams getting to the basket and finishing through the contact. Bonus free throw coming for Williams. And Dirk Williams says, I'll one-up you. Again, Kieran talked about it at the top of the show. One of the most efficient players we have in the BBL. Inside the paint, outside the paint. This guy can get it done from all over the floor. Oh, the thing is, at the moment with the Cheshire, you know, they're, they're not playing high intense defense, as you can see, but they're fouling. You know, you've got to, you've got to pick your, pick your team. If, 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 you're, if you're not playing high intense defense, don't foul. But at the moment, worst thing, key scenario for the Cheshire is they've got three team fouls already, and oh, again, and ones they're picking up. Well, in the Jets heyday, they were renowned for a six-man rotation, a big old zone, never committing any fouls. Maybe the big old zone might be the. Uh, flashback they need here tonight it's Hudson cuts to the basket it's a perfectly timed cut there Jack Hudson a later acquisition into this club and look at that great cut straight down the middle most left hand finish and Anderson gets his hands on it Green comes up with it Green with another huge shot wow he's took top control of that loose ball and then he's got one thing on his mind and that's the dust of basketball huge play Anderson. Jack going all the way to the basket and close the layup. Fletcher looking to attack again and Hudson fall for the foul on the floor. That'll be a sideline ball. And Fletch being a, a veteran in this game, he sees the matchup there with Hudson. That's twice that he's got him on his heels and recognized that you cannot stay in front of me and has aggressively attack the basket. Fourth team foul now for the Phoenix, and one more, of course, will bring them in the penalty, but one more will also add to those notches, and we'll be on foul watch sometime soon. Well, at the minute, the four have gone to four different players. Here's Jones' first touch of the ball, and he knocks down the three. And that's a guy you cannot leave open, and Chetra Phoenix has to locate him if no one else. And look how open he is here. Terrible you know, defensive structure there, and leaving Cozy Joseph in the corner. Evans, cross court to Jack, has a lot of room. He's a guy who can't lose either. And that's a big shot for the Cheshire Phoenix. If they're going to be able to hang offensively with Manchester, they need the other guys other than Evans and Austin to come to the party on that side of the ball. And Cheshire will get shot against this match as the Giants team. This isn't a team that uh, is typically locking down and turning over again. Hudson oh. running it back, he's pinned, but the follow from Anderson is good for two. Wow, this game is already picked up in pace. Jack Hudson this time anticipates, steals the ball. And as you see, that second shot there hit the backboard before the spot away there from Green. But you love the effort. Let's 
almost turned over again. They do come up with it, Cheshire. Evans to Austin. Austin straight at him. He's inside the no charge circle, I think, which is why it couldn't be an offensive foul. Green has it ripped away. Another turnover. Austin on to Hudson, and Hudson will lay it in. And that will force Vince McCauley into a timeout here with uh, 426 on the clock. The Manchester Giants lead the uh, Cheshire Phoenix 19 to 15. Well, a great start for Taj Green, player of the month, and earlier Drew caught up with it. Taj, it seemed like you in a zone. You coming off a triple double, just been named BBL Player of the Month. How does it feel? It's a blessing. Um, just being a rookie, you know, getting this type of ac accomplishment, like this one of the things I, you know, read on my board that I was going to accomplish this year. And um, this wouldn't happen without my team anyway. So without them, I wouldn't be able to do this. And let's touch on that team. How has your game improved since being here in Manchester? Um, as everybody's seen at the beginning, you know, it was kind of a little scrappy and stuff. So it's just a style of play that I was used to um, from back home to where I had to adapt to here. So it's like, you know, it was kind of different. So I just changed, you know, being aggressive at times and no win and we're not to be too aggressive. So um, just really, that was the main thing with me, just learning how to play aggressive in a, a good aggressive way so the rest won't be on my back like, you know, they kind of is now. And you guys are wild card, as many teams wouldn't want to face you in the playoffs. What do you think of your playoff chances? Uh, we have a good run. Um, at the end of the day, it's playoffs. You know, you win or you go home. So at the end of the day, you got to win. And I feel like our chances is really high winning. Um, like we said, all I'll do is pray, let God handle it, and just hoop. Well, we'll be there to watch. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Well, he certainly has been hooping that triple-double last week. The first one ever in the Manchester Giants history since the uh, franchise came back into life. Here's Fletcher. Stolen away again by Cheshire. Austin again right to the rim, but that one's a little short. Yeah, Mr. Mario Fortuna, he won't have a bag. This one, he should convert. Anderson called for the foul. Well, five fouls on uh, Cheshire here in the first quarter, but five different guys committing them. If you're going to commit five, that's the way to do it. Absolutely, you got to spread it out, but we want no one thing that Cheshire's going to do. They're going to be aggressive, and before that possession there, there were four steals in a row, and if you don't know, they are the biggest thieves in the BBL as they got three guys there in the top five in steals. It was a poor offense there for, for the Giants. Ramon Fletcher dribbled the ball in the center court there. The ball didn't move. There was lack of movement there from his teammates. So no options but the turnover. And that resulted in, well, almost resulted in a, a layup never end for, for, for the Phoenix. makes the second from the free throw line. Anderson late in the shot clock, looking to attack. Gets to the rim, but cannot get his shot to go. And Evans trying to steal one away again. Josephs with three, in and out. And Jack with the rebound. Wow, some busy active hands there from Evans. Oh, and down the lane is Jack. For the one-handed throwdown. That's how you execute straight down the middle. You see, ACL Jack, there were a thunderous finish. Fletcher has it knocked loose, and again, Cheshire come up with the ball. Here's Austin, kicks this one back out. Green is off the mark for Jack. And again, Cheshire getting it done on the defensive end, but that's the third time they haven't been able to cash in. You gotta be able to take advantage. Fletcher with the long range too. And that's his experience there and his talent. Fletcher what, knew which spot he wanted to get to, he got to it. And look how cool and composed he was with that pull-up jump shot. Austin. To the rim, and one for Larry Austin. 
Larry Austin Jr. really liked that matchup there against Kobe Joseph. Went left there and he's able to use his body to get back to the middle there. A tough finish, Larry Austin Jr. Well, that foul is the first of the game on the Manchester Giants. Kofi Joseph's called for the foul. And the one thing that I worry with this Cheshire Phoenix offense with the absence of Teague and Will Neighbor is the spacing that they create for Marcus Evans and Larry Austin. And you can see that Manchester is cheating off those other guys and packing the paint. And right now, both of those guys who are their leading scorer only sit with four points total. So that's something to look out for here tonight. Austin converts the free throw. He'll get himself a little breather with Archibald returning to the game. And that's another thing for Coach Ben Thomas. He's got to find out ways now, opportunities in games to, to rest his key players. He's not going to be able to do that too much this evening. Well, Williams got the pile. That's a foot speed mismatch right there. That's an excellent job here. Getting into the middle with no interior help whatsoever. Hudson getting into all blocking foul is the call. Referees both agree with the call. I'm just thinking they're wondering which number they were giving it against. Well, Fletcher saying he was outside, and then the referees, I think, uh, in agreement that he was outside for the charging zone. And I think he might have got there just a split second too late, but right intent there by the veteran Ramon Fletcher looking to sacrifice his body at the tender age of 34 years old. And one of the best this game has seen. Well, Fletcher uh, was the number shown to the table. So we'll put the line shooting to him. Of course, played for the Manchester Giants previously. He was one of the fan favorites there. In the breakout season 11 points, nine rebounds a game. He was that workhorse. I think a, a player that the fans really appreciate having in the Giants jersey. Although not for his free throw shooting. <laughs> no, that was not one of his strengths. But no one is perfect. Nobody now. is perfect. It's Fletcher. Off the mark for three. That's uh, Ulf doing what he does best, going after the rebounds. And uh, Cheshire come away with it. Oh, how did he miss that from close range? Maceo Jack. Goodness me, Phoenix will look back at this videotape of this and count the number of, of times that they should have converted. Robertson does convert from close range. And like I mentioned, you better convert because the Manchester Giants will on this end of the ball. And they probably missed about three or four opportunities, and right now it's a six-point game, and that could be the difference. Well, here's Evans off the back of the ring. And when you come here, you normally need well into the 90s to win. Fletcher with his silky move to the win. I told you earlier, Ramon Fletcher likes that matchup as he spins it behind his back and gets to his strong left hand there for the finish. At the moment, all you've got to do is beat your defender, and there is no help whatsoever. Yes. Ramon Fletcher knows that. A great initial move there behind the back to get him that space, but and he knows he can stroll to the rim for an easy two. Well, there's no paint protector back there with Will Neighbor and Teague, even though you wouldn't consider them paint protectors, but David Off is being drawn out by the three-point shooter of the Manchester Giants. Lewis has it knocked away, is able to recover the ball. Ulf with the rebound. He's done a great job so far, David Ulf, and that's what we're going to need him to do. Very limited second punch, second chance opportunities for, for the Giants. Cheshire trying to take the time off the clock, and Lewis is going to get called for the foul. The referee offers him a hand to get up, but he's too busy complaining about the call. And that's a great take right there with Manchester Giants with fouls to give here late and smart play by Nick Lewis. They still got one more to give. 
There's Evans firing up the three. Off the mark. Green with the rebound. And that will do it for as ever. A high scoring first quarter here in Manchester. Vince McCauley and his Giants have an eight point lead here on Retro Night. And they've been looking really good offensively. End of the first, it's Manchester 28, Cheshire 20. We'll be back with the second quarter after this break. Welcome back to Manchester as we get the second quarter underway. The Giants with the ball and the lead by eight. Here's Green losing the ball on the spin. And Anderson drops it up to Austin and he lays it in. Love that execution there. Good spacing and movement without the basketball for Larry Austin Jr. with a finish. That six turnovers now for the Giants. Given lifeline here to Cheshire Phoenix. Fletcher off the mark for three. Green with the offensive rebound, trying to bully his way to the basket. And in the end, that's going to be foul number two on Oak. And that's what we talked about at the top of the show, and an area that the Giants can take advantage of, the offensive boards with the Phoenix being one of the worst defensive teams in the league. And trouble for Phoenix as off as their only meet there on that live roster. See what coach decides to do here. Friendly bounce for Green. And again. Wow, looks like it's a home court advantage, a home court roll there. Green. When things are going well, they're going well. Everything he touches. Results are positive. Output for his team. Well, this is the challenge now for this lineup in the uh, Cheshire team with Oak off the bench. And Anderson goes down the lane for a jab. <laughs> oh, good. Initial attack there from Austin Jr., but it's Anderson again, the aggressor. The one who's leading from the front. Eight points personal now for him. Essentially, you've got Anderson at the five, and 
Green bullying his way to the basket for a jab. And you called it there, bullying there at six foot eight, having the elusiveness to Euro step there and slam it down with two hands. Anderson trying to get those points right back and he'll go to the free throw line. Nice little matchup developing here between Green and Anderson. Go right at each other too. Athletic forwards going at it. And it's Anderson who gets fouled. A lot of play. And that's the part of the game you love, right? When both players take the challenge, going after each other. They know it's on the line. It's April. Playoffs around the corner. The sun is staying open later, later and later. So you know it's at stake. Well, Callum Jones checking into the game for the first time. Retro night. You don't get more retro in Manchester basketball than the name Jones. <laughs> His dad, Jeff, originally played for... If you follow all the linear, Manchester basketball is a bit complicated, but if you go back all the way to the 70s, Jeff played for the original ATS Giants, and then all the way through, and of course was the driving force at the reincarnation of this version of the Manchester Giants as well. A lot of history in the Jones household. What would we do without that knowledge of you? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You hear it there, he's irreplaceable, he's putting it out there. Here's Kofi Josephs along the baseline. He's green with the offensive rebound, stuffs it on the bottom of the uh, backboard, and away come the Jets as they are on their shirts, the Phoenix as they are in the standings. Here's uh, Archibald for three. There you go. Archibald gets it to go. That's his first three points of the season. He sort of came into this game. And he's let the th flow come to him. He hasn't forced up any shots. And the first knockdown brings his team within four. Austin with the steal. Archibald comes away and Archibald lays it in. And that's what he does. I call him a pit bull. He just manhandles Callum Jones there, takes the ball from him, and Chester Jets are able to capitalize on the other end. Joseph loses the ball and that will go back to Cheshire. This turnover was really racking up for the Giants. That's turnover number eight now for them. And 32 points to 30. The Giants lead the Phoenix here in the second quarter. And uh, Marcus Evans has been playing really well of late for the Phoenix. And earlier Drew caught up with him. Marcus, what was the message immediately following that trophy final loss? Um, just bounce back. Uh, you know, after a tough loss like that at the buzzer, um, you know, season can go two ways. You can either bounce back or, you know, put your head down and pack it in. So, um, you know, two big games going in the weekend, and the guys responded well. And speaking of bounce back, you've been balling ever since a career high, 34 points in your last game. Did that trophy final performance eat at you a little bit personally? Uh, definitely, you know, I mean, when you're right there in the game and, you know, you lose at a last second buzzer like that, um, and especially, you know, knowing the mistakes, you know, we made down a, down a stretch when we had a chance to win, um, you know, uh, Coach telling us to foul and, you know, uh, make a mistake and not getting a chance to foul. So, uh, you know, coming back in the weekend, you know, just wanted to kind of make up for it and, you know, get the momentum back on the right track. And as we look forward to the playoffs, how deep can this team go? Uh, deep as we want to, honestly. I mean, I think when we're playing at our best, uh, we're competitive with any team in the league. Um, I think we've proven that uh, throughout the uh, throughout the year. Uh, we've played teams tough, um, so I think it's just really up to us. You know, how we come out, um, come out of aggression and playing the way we're supposed to. You know, sky's the limit. Thanks for your time, my man. Appreciate it. Well, they have been aggressive here today in forcing turnovers and getting to the basket, and that is why this game is in the balance early in the second quarter. And they've missed some shots as well that they should have made. So, you know, when they look back at this, you know, they could be in a, a, you know, a healthy lead at the moment. Jack trying to put them in the lead, but his three rims out. And they're in good shape. They're doing this all with Marcus Evans currently sitting on zero points. So an aberration for him most definitely. And you know he's going to pick it up sooner or later. Rooney way again. His... Archibald, he misses the three. Jack with the rebound. And 
there's another three. Now they are in front. That's good news for Maceo Shaq. He hasn't shot the ball particularly well, but he's been really active. He's been crashing the boards, and that takes him to eight points now. Williams trying to knock down the three. Austin has numbers. Oh, he's fouled first before Williams got the block. <laughs> wow, that was a great play though from Williams who the blocks on the body here first with Lewis and Williams comes across there. Wow. Great play. I don't see where the foul is. I feel Lewis is straight up there and Williams has come across. No call for me there. I thought it was retro night. Would they have called that in the 90s? <laughs> they would not. <laughs> well, Lewis will make his way to the bench on his second personal foul. But one thing I think there's a technical, is that? 11 white, technical foul. Derek Williams wow. must have said something there. And you compound the mistakes there by the Manchester Giants. Really sloppy here in the first half, as you mentioned. And nine turnovers, but from those nine, eight of those is skills. You know, a lot of them unforced, a lot of them by the aggressive defense by Chester Phoenix, but they got to clean things up here. Well, Anderson makes the free throw for the technical, and we go back to the two shots for the original foul. Manchester led by as many as 11 in this game, but Cheshire now with their biggest lead, potentially four if this goes in, but then it does. It's a good turnaround, good response from Cheshire. Yeah, and it's been, you know, a completely contrast performance so far from the offensive end. They get 28 points in the first quarter from the Giants in the second quarter. They've only got four points, but it's been compounded by their, their errors that they're making. They're forced into turnovers, not getting good shots, hence why they're stuck on four points. Williams in the corner, gets the three away. Austin with the rebound. Good defensive set there from Cheshire. Contested corner ball three. Jack misses his three. Fletcher stumbling, able to get it back to Lee. Fletcher all the way to the ring. And how many times have we seen that Ramon Fletcher sizing up the defender and then tiptoeing his way to a strong hand, which is the left, and finishes softly off the glass. Evans around the screen. Takes the mid-range. Good contest from Green. Williams comes away from it. Williams all the way to the finger roll. That's what the Giants need to do. They need to keep attacking because there is no shot blockers or legitimate size inside for the Cheshire Phoenix. So Giants can really exploit that in the key. Austin perhaps is deflected away by Lee. There's Lee at the offensive end. And the long rebound comes out to Anderson. Anderson runs out the three. Both teams are doing a great job of running off each other's misses and turnovers. And with both teams lacking depth, see who has the juice down the stretch. A green touchdown. A three-pointer to put Manchester back in front. When your confidence is high, you need to ride that way for as long as you can. Taj Green is not going to be the most confident man in the BBL right now. And that shot shows exactly why. Evans late in the shot clock. Front line on that one. I just wonder if the two teams are a little fatigued here. The pace of the game has been pretty quick in the first... 16 minutes and whether they're just collectively taking a breath or two three 
46 to go here in the second quarter. A timeout has been called by Cheshire. 39-36. The Giants lead. The break in play. I'll just give you the halftime scores from the other three games going on. Caledonia leading Bristol 46 to 37 at the half. In Newcastle, it's the Eagles 36, Sheffield 50. And they're not quite at the half in the uh, Copper Box, but London lead Leicester 47 45. They're 30 seconds away from half time in that one. And well, Retro Night, you can see they're all wearing t shirts of uh, former players, and in the case of Nigel Lloyd there and Vince McCauley, former coaches as well, Nick Nurse, Jimmy Brandon, saw uh, Paul. Camwell had Joe Walton Jr. had a couple of spells at Manchester both before the BBL and in the BBL era as well. And Vince has got his shorts on. I don't know if is he, is he rolling back the, the retro player coach move here. <laughs> I mean, was it the shorts the 80s? I think he got well, mixed yeah, up with yeah. about the 90s tonight, isn't it? No. Vince, uh, it's been a few years, I think it's fair to say, since Vince was a player in this league. Well, maybe he just wanted to show the thin legs. Yeah, he's still got the, still got the legs out. The other thing is on the back of those T-shirts, they've got the names of all the players who played for the old Manchester Giants franchise as well. It's a nice touch. Some names uh, I haven't seen for a while. One of the T-shirts is Vince Brookings, who was an incredible scorer in the 80s. Fletcher again, looking to exploit that matchup for the win. And that's it from old Fletcher. If you beat your first man, the chances are you're going to get a lane to the basket. And you just see, Ramon Fletcher now been able to get profit from that a number of times already in this first half. Nice pass, but it's read well by Williams. Leicester must have hit a three because they are at the half of the top of box, and Leicester are ahead 47 48. It's a good recovery because they were getting well beaten in the first quarter. Here's Evans from behind the arc, and he strings the three. And it was only a matter of time until Marcus Evans got it going. Last two games, he shot eight for 12 from, from beyond the arc, and not normally in Sporte, but seems to be a guy in a rhythm bouncing back from that trophy final loss. You never know what you're going to get from a guy who's coming off a 34 point game as well. Is he going to carry on? Is it going to be a down game? But that's his first basket, so we'll see how that fares now for him for the rest of the game. Well, it's inspired into a block at the other end, and his back to back threes now. Larry Austin with the triple. A little Worried for uh, John Tresvac, a former Manchester legend, who's in the front row there as well. Well, we got retro now. We got the fans getting involved, and that's what it's all about. That's what we like to see: competition. Robinson underneath through the lane. That's where Giants have got to go. They've got to go inside, either via their big forwards or Ramon Fletcher or a guard penetrating, because at the moment that's an area of weakness for this Cheshire team. Austin knocked away by Williams. Austin gets it back. Shot clock down to two. Anderson fires up. And then Williams with the rebound. Lee's going to stop and fire up. Robinson with the offensive rebound. Not quite enough on the finger roll. Second attempt misses as well. And Green is able to clean it all up. Volley basketball. Giants is bigger and stronger. And living off the offensive rebounds there. Well, Jack couldn't quite hang on to that pass from Anderson. Just have been relatively good in that area. They've looked after the basketball. That's just four turnovers for them. Complete contrast to the Giants with nine. Well, rinse and repeat there. Beat your man, get to the rim. But Fletcher, unusually, doesn't quite lay it in. Anderson for the basket. Anderson's done an excellent job of being able to create for himself. He's got 10 points personal, but he has been that aggressive nature in trying to attack the basket. And 
Johnson knocks it down. He's going to just sort his... I don't think it's his shoelace. I think it might be his ankle uh, straps. I just think that's a sign of experience. When you've been playing for 10 years, the ankle straps get bigger and bigger. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I never played one game without my... The ankle stayed all right, it was the knees. I wish yeah, I had yeah, you should have got the knee straps out. to go in the first half. Lewis back in for Lee. Here's Dirk Williams for three. Lewis with the offensive rebound, takes it home. Well, they lead the league in second half points. at second chance opportunities. And there's Nick Lewis there just being reintroducing to the game, scoring above the rim for the relatively easy putback. <laughs> Hudson looking for room along the baseline. It's on to Anderson, it's got to go, it doesn't go in time. And it's a shot clock violation. Anderson should have shot that first one. He's currently 0 for 4 in the three-point line, so I think that may have played into his decision-making there to use the pump fake. But Anderson has to let that one go. And it's retro night, they ought to get 30 seconds to shoot in instead of 24. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just change the rules of the game. <laughs> I'm already struggling, Chester Jets, yeah. Chester, uh, Chester Phoenix. Fletcher ticking it down, he can take this virtually to the buzzer. And, uh, Hudson call for his second foul. Well, haven't got to go to the limit pretty early in the first quarter, they haven't yet in the second. Into Fletcher, now he looks to attack again. Has it stripped away and that will be a Cheshire ball. Excellent defense there from Jack Hudson. He's just picked up his second foul. He knows he has to be extra cautious not to pick up another, but his intensity didn't decline. Well, Anderson's going to fire up from the halfway line and not too far away, but that'll do it. Uh, for an entertaining first half here in Manchester, as ever it is at the National Basketball Performance Center, it's the Giants 47, the Jets 44, and that's about on par for games in this building. It's up and down, and both teams scoring freely. Yeah, we had an inkling that we we're going to be into, in for an entertaining game, and that's exactly what it's been. Even from the tip-off quarter, one was so fast-paced, up and down, up and down. There's open shots galore. This isn't a, a, a defensive exhibition by any means, and both teams getting open shots. So now it's a case of which team can capitalise on those offensive, on those uh, you know offensive looks that they're getting. Well, that's uh, certainly one area that they must surely be talking about. The other one I would have thought is three-point shooting, particularly Manchester, who, you know, Vince always says he wants 43-point attempts. They're a little down on that, but he'll want to see the percentage go up as much as anything else. Yeah, they haven't shoot, been shooting as many threes because they're getting so much joy inside. You see the battle of the boards there, 27 to 15. It shows you there's a, a, a significant... Uh, advantage for the Giants on size but also the way they're able to, to do a lot of their work inside which is then naturally you know, reducing the volume of the three point shots that's taken. And the 10 turnovers there have been turned into 11 uh, points from turnovers which is really good for the Cheshire Phoenix and it's how they've kept the scoreboard ticking. Yeah it's good down but it could be better, they've missed some chippies there and some easy layups, really good intensity from the Cheshire Phoenix I thought on that defensive end, you know they're men down coming into this one but it hasn't sort of it hasn't made them take the foot off the pedal in aspect, but just a little too thin inside. They have been just a little bit, but it's still very much in the balance here in Manchester, where the Giants are 47 points to 44 ahead. And uh, I think now we can get some reaction 
Ramon Fletcher is with Drew. Fletcher, we know you're one of the best when it comes to dishing the ball, but tonight you got 10 early points. Seem to be putting your head down, looking for your own offense. Uh, when, when the plays get stagnant and things like that, that's some things I need to do. Um, Chester's a really good defensive team, so those open pocket pass might not be there. So I feel if I put pressure on the rim, they might open up. So. And Chester missing two big players in their front court with Teague and Nab Neighbor. How are you guys looking to exploit that? You already know when the team is missing somebody, it makes them even more dangerous. And it's, they have a real good four with Larry, with uh, with Mike Marcus Evans, with Jamel, and both of there too. So they're not missing that much. I mean, I know Teague is a really good, good addition, but that makes the team even more dangerous. And we know what you guys can do offensively, but ultimately it's going to come down to slowing down the two-headed monster of Evans and Austin. How will you look to continue we that? we got to keep Larry from going downhill. That's his strength. He's the type of player that gets warm with stuff like that. As you saw, he got to the basket and he hit an open three, which is in a strong suit. But when you get somebody like that confidence, the rim opens up. Thanks for your time, Flesh. Good luck in the second half. Well, the Giants have the edge at the half, but Cheshire will go into the locker room pretty happy with how they turn that game around. It's a three-point ball game. Reaction and analysis coming next. And breathe, what a half that was, as we expected. Fletch fishing, Tosh Green doing his thing early doors. The say Jack hit back, and the two teams just traded blow after blow in a breathless opening two quarters. Cheshire win an eight point hole after the first quarter, but they fought back, cut the lead down to just three. The Giants leading this one, of course, the crucial battle for that fourth seed in the playoffs. Both teams, as we look at the numbers, poor from the three-point range, despite Cheshire holding up towards the end of the first half. Efficient shooting from London, Fletch and Dirk Williams, of course, leading by example. Look at that, eight steals for Cheshire. That's very much their MO. Manchester dominating the boards. Key battle we thought it was gonna be at 27, 20 of which defensive rebound. So, Kieran Achara, Ben Thomas is going to be pretty happy with that, right? Because Cheshire hit back after a, a tricky start. Yeah, and I think, you know, they're, they're, they're getting baited. They shoot the threes. They're, they're shooting threes. Jamel Anderson, 
you know, he's over five at the moment. I, I, that's, I, no, it's, that's not like him. I, I, I expect him to make those shots in, this, in, the, in the second half. Taj Green, we saw in the story of the half, unsurprisingly, he is a walking, talking highlight reel, and he demonstrated why he electrifies his fans each and every week here in Manchester. He's just a stat stuffer. He does it all, you know, and he plays with such energy. But just look at the throwing down. It's just... It's great to see the energy he plays with. You know, that change of direction there, a little Euro step into the dunk, knocking down the three point. What a great pickup Vince McCauley has there with, with Taj Green. And he's in the conversation for MVP, no doubt about that. Sam Decker, maybe the front runner, but Taj Green is right up there. He's on course for a double double, incidentally. We looked at that efficient shooting from Manchester. You called Dirk Williams the most efficient in the business, and he demonstrated why Dirk Williams really on point in that first half. He just goes about it with such ease. You know, it's, I, I, I like to say he's a, quite an elegant player. You know, he plays at his own pace. You know, look at the change of direction through the legs. It's a nice little lay, layup. Show. You know, he just he just finds a way to score. And it, it's great to see that he's still doing it season in, season out. Williams with nine points, uh, 100%. Although he was also struggling from the three-point range as well. Hasn't hit anything from downtown yet. So you wonder if he will start to heat up. And that does get interesting when you think about the comparative lack of depth with these two teams. We know that Cheshire are coming in short stacks, no Teague, no neighbor. Manchester, lowest in the BBL in bench points. They've only had five bench points in this half. I wonder which team... The, uh, is going to get affected more by being short stack going into the second half. Well, I think the Jets are used to it, you know, and I, th I think it comes, you know, I, I like to see Dirk Williams comes alive in that fourth quarter, you know, so that's, a, that's a going to be a big quarter, you know, if they can ho hold the fort now, keep it into the fourth, it'll be a, a really interesting game. Larry Austin Jr., another player that we love to watch, another explosive player. He had a big first half for the Cheshire Phoenix. 12 points, doesn't tell uh, the whole story. Five dishes, two steals as well. He was everywhere as usual. Mr. Do it all, you know. As, as Fletch mentioned, he likes to attack downhill. Just finds his way to get to the basket. You know, going, weaving in and out of the bigs. You know, averting the block shots and now knocking down three, shooting with, through the ball with confidence. That's, that's a scary sign for the Giants. It is keenly poised for the second half, which we're going to have for you in just a few moments time but we were thinking seeing as it's retro night tonight we're in the mood to look back just a little bit and as Vince McCauley is representing tonight uh, we thought let's dive into the vault and find some Vince mid 90 circa 95 the caption says just as he was about to embark on his coaching career looking sharp now two of the biggest names of British basketball were going head to head at that time, the Toronto Raptors head coach Nick Nurse and the legendary Kevin Cadle here in Manchester in the playoff finals. So sit back and enjoy Birmingham and the London Towers. So the London Towers have won all three competitions that they've been in so far and they've got a chance for a clean sweep here. Quite simple really, it comes down to just one game on the season. It's the London Towers versus the Birmingham Bullets. Who will win the championships? Duhaney. Jams it in the crowd. Rise at the Wembley Arena. Great, great individual effort here. Nobody was going to stop Steve Butler that time. Here's Nigel again for three. Mike, I got to say where that one came from. Player of the year. Austin. Nice fadeaway. Oh, baby! Mello Austin. Run down, run down! Gets it out to Windless. Windless looked up at the clock. Trey the three. Trey the three to tie the ball game. 60 apiece at the end of the third. And Miko should jam this. And there's! Nigel Lloyd, nice change of pace. Oh, baby! Who's coming up with this? There it is, the end of and the championship belongs to the Birmingham Bullets. Going old school there, and speaking of old school, Dan Ratledge, who we uh, talked about on last week's show, celebrating 30 years broadcasting this fantastic sport.
seeing that, Dad, I bet a lot of memories come flooding back, particularly seeing the late, great Kevin Cade have gone way too soon, of course. Yeah, indeed. Obviously, me and Kevin started at Sky Sports at the same time, and it was a real honour to work with a man who'd done so much in British basketball, such a legend of the game, won so many trophies. Uh, it was a bit scary, a bit daunting at first, working alongside Kevin, but as you say, he was such a, a great person. And that game there, that was really the making of Nick Nurse, if you like. He'd been a player coach at Derby a few years before, but that Birmingham team, led by Nigel Lloyd, who, of course, is assistant here uh, at Manchester, was a fantastic uh, real statement for Nick Nurse before he went on to do great things both here and, of course, now in the NBA. And we saw a picture of Vince McCauley before we saw uh, that footage from the final. He's almost had 30 years coaching at the highest level. A true legend of British basketball, isn't he? Yeah, indeed. I can actually still remember him as a player, uh, but, but more fondly as a coach. And as you say, he's been around for so long. He's part of the furniture in British basketball. You can't imagine uh, a, a period of time without Vince on the sidelines uh, uh, doing interviews. He's just a tremendous guy. Long may that continue. Uh, Vince enjoying and celebrating retro night tonight. Got to think Kev Cade will have loved it as well, right? Oh, Kev would have definitely loved it. It's a tremendous uh, occasion. It's great to see it going on all over the uh, country over the last few days and weeks. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Dan, of course, is going to be on point for what promises to be a fascinating second half coming your way. Just wonder if these two can keep it up for four quarters. The breakneck pace. We hope they can. Second up, it's coming next. It is a tight second half coming your way. Who is going to blink first? Two of the most exciting teams in the BBL living up to their billing. Let's get back to Ad and Dan. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, the uh, not only the result on the line here, but the head-to-head -head between these two teams is as well. 
Manchester trail 2-1, but if they win this game, we'll win the head-to-head -head on points difference in the meetings between the two teams, which is important should they finish level at the end of the season, and Anderson gets the first score of the second half. And that could happen, Dan. Obviously, these two teams are clustered together, all fighting for the top four, five, six place finishes, and two easy baskets for both clubs here to start the second half. If this is a indication of things to come, we might be in the 150 point bracket right here. Well, we've been suggesting they might be talking defense at half time. We haven't seen any of it as yet. As Anderson continues his struggles from behind the arc. Green's long rebound comes out to Williams, and via Green gets to uh, Robeson. <laughs> Sometimes it's not you know, executed by design, but the ball finds its way through to Robeson, who says, thank you very much for easy kiss off the glass. Austin lays it in. Ooh, Austin. <laughs> Bringing out the entire repertoire here tonight with the sweeping right hook looking like Kareem. Great move. That's a power move that would have looked very fitting in the retro style of basketball right there. Here's Lane. Well, that is something we didn't see back in the day. A big long number four shooting threes. Foul is called on Fletcher. That is the one evolution of the game, I would say. From uh, from the ye olden days. In the old days, you had a center, you had a point guard, you had a power forward, and uh, you had a small forward. Nowadays, everybody shoots three, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> right on cue, and Archibald, who's had a really strong first half, connects on that three. Eight points personal for him now. Well, Fletcher getting all the way to the basket, but he's blocked. Evans with the transition three, that is sure. Fletcher is all the way down court, and he will chase it back for two. And bad shot there for Marcus Evans. It's one of those shots that you have to make. I know he's coming up a 34-point game, but what it does is that miss was on the oh, oh, Lee, he's throwing it away. Giants have rim protectors in William Lee. Oh, good, good footwork for two. Nice fundamental play there by David Wolf. He says, settle down as both teams are shooting from behind the arc. Let's get something inside. And a nice move there from Better. Dirk Williams flies up the three back iron. Nice pass. Oh, another great block. This time Robinson with the denial. Wow. And Green down court. Oh, he's gone right over the top there. And Green quick to help him back to his feet. And everybody seems okay. Good sportsmanship there from Taj Green. There's the block. Wow, Robinson just comes across there and reacts. And here's the pump fake. And I say good sportsmanship because as soon as a player leaves his feet, that like Green has within his own right to go up through the player. And if he does that, you know, you never know where Archibald lands. But thankfully, he's unhurt, and Green again, good sportsmanship in helping him up. Yeah, we've seen some scary falls in that exact same situation in our careers. And we see tonight that both teams do, don't lack offense. And for me, I think it's going to come down to which star comes to the party first. The Cheshire Phoenix, Marcus Evans, we just talked about it, the career high, currently on three points. On the other side, Manchester Giants, William Lee in his second game back from a grind injury, sitting there on zero points. So which one of these guys joins the offensive party might be the difference here tonight. Here's all up top. Anderson finally 
finally gets one to go. Well, he's, he's deserved this, and that's his first three-pointer tonight. One for seven currently, but he's got 17 points passed. Now, he's been aggressive, and he's looked to shoulder that responsibility for his team. Nice pass for William Saleh, the two. And William Lee gets to the party, and there's no better way to join it by getting a layup. Does a bunch of work for your confidence. Here's Anderson along the baseline. Oh, Jamel Anderson. Whoa, what a pass. Oh, oh, oh. Jamel Anderson is seeing who's going. And if he knows it's Tars Green, and he knows it's going to be contested. So he jumped a little bit higher and rose above the defender wow. to dunk it through. Wow. Green get back to him here. He's along the baseline trying to shovel it underneath, but Evans comes away. Pope leads by Robinson. Well, they keep it in play, but only to Ulf. And Ulf says, Thank you very much. A messy play there, but it's Ulf who reacts first. There's two players looking to save the ball, but what that does is it brings, picks them both up the play. And Ulf skips himself away to an easy two. Another turnover. Jamal Anderson with the anticipation this time. And here's Austin, off again on the offensive glass, plays it in. A nice job there for Cheshire, turning defense into offense, picking up their 10th still of the night, and off just seems to be in the right place at the right time, every possession, making major contributions here tonight for the Cheshire Phoenix. Almost another steal. Dart Williams knocks down the three. That's a big time shot there from a big time player. Dart Williams understands the tide of this game is changing. He takes it upon himself to shoot his team back within two. Anderson with the head break. Out to Evans. Archibald three rings out. Unfortunate possession there for the Cheshire Phoenix because that was beautiful basketball. Letting the ball work, find the open man, and just in and out there by Archibald. Green's triple ruffles out. This is such an erratic game. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's borderline stressful. And I'm the neutral fan. I can't even imagine what it's like watching from home being a Phoenix or Giants fan. A tough feed and Ulf nearly converted it, but he will go to the line for two. Yeah, and that was a nice little shovel pass there from Jamel Anderson. And again, David Ulf just in the right place at the right time. Misses that little bunny there, but he has the line for two where he can add to his total of six points here tonight. Well, Ulf is a retro player, really. The, 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 the way he plays the game would have worked perfectly in 1996 by the way just to give some context to people the Birmingham team we saw at halftime that season 95 96 made 221 three pointers in the whole season the whole team combined including Nigel Lloyd Dirk Williams three down here was his 102nd on his own <laughs> wow. and the season isn't finished oh. yeah that's great the game has changed Uh, you know what, like fashion, sometimes uh, you know, the old fashion comes back in, in, in favor again and fashion again. Do you know if we have the time where hook shots and mid range jump shots have come back in? Well, if they make them worth three. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unless they make them by, worth four, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all know we've seen that little kid in the gym shooting his. Barely can get the ball to the rim, but he's out there at 35 feet. Well, to be fair, I was, uh, as Fletcher goes to the ring, I was around when they invented the three-point line, and the first thing I did as a little kid, jack up a three. Did you make it? <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, probably. Probably, I can't remember. Oh, wow, I love the confidence. <laughs> There's no video footage to prove I didn't. Hey. <laughs> Is uh, Jack for three, and he knocks it down. Good show to the basketball again from the Phoenix, and this time the four swings to Maceo Jack, who knocks it down. Here's 
Fletcher. He is fouled and will shoot two. Well, good attack there from Ramon Fletcher, but a little bit different there from the first half. He beats his man and then Marcus Evans steps across. So a little bit more protection there inside now for the Phoenix, which is mitigating those easy baskets for the Giants. Foul number three on Jack Hudson. He's the first player in the game to get there. And it's the Giants just understanding the scouting report as Marcus Evans is guarding Roberson, who's in the corner. That's not normally his game, so he's there in the paint as that second help defender the way it should be. Well, still Cheshire lead by four here. Evans passes to Fletcher. Now Williams comes away with it. Williams drops it off to Robertson right now. For that. Good execution there on the transition. There's a turnover there from Phoenix. Jamel Anderson pleading to the referee on the previous play, but it was too late. Giants were out of the race to convert. Hudson. Anderson spins away, Evans, shot clock getting low, it needs to go on, Hudson fires it away. Rebound Larry Austin, he's so great on the offensive glass. Yes, a six foot two, leads this team in rebound and is a pest on the offensive glass as well. And as you mentioned, Dan, we've seen that many times from Larry Austin. Just a powerful, I want it more type of play there, it's a big yes. play as well. Jack Williams misses the three. And that was great defense there by Evans. A nice heavy closeout down the sharpshooter Dirk Loom. Jack contested three, a little short. Fletcher with the rebound. Fletcher with a little shimmy shank to the rim. That is beautiful, and that's a Ramon Fletcher in rhythm, coming downhill, no inside help, beautiful. And every time he has Jack Hudson in front of him in transition, he's in attack mode. Well, Jack in attack mode gets all the way to the basket. Giants and their inability to get stops here has given Phoenix the confidence to hang around here. So Williams going quick and just rolling it in. Yeah, there's no stopping in this game. You better score and sprint back on the defensive end because both teams are in go mode. Evans again is all at the basket right now. And it was only a matter of time before Marcus Evans got going in this one, and that's what he does. Likes to get inside the paint. Great finish there. Fletcher off the glass. Cuts it to two. What a finish from Fletcher there. Top play. Well, we've reached the end of the first quarter, and these two teams just going score for score. There is no stopping either of them right now, and we are no nearer to knowing who might win this ball game in Manchester. End of the third quarter, it is 71 to the Giants, 73 to the Cheshire Phoenix. We will have the fourth quarter right after this break.
Welcome back to Manchester. It's a two-point game. Cheshire Phoenix with the lead. Manchester Giants with the ball. Robinson driving in. It's going to be a flop warning on Hudson as it's thrown away. That's good. Position though from Jack Hudson, okay, look, he doesn't get a, a charge, but what it does is it makes Roberson make a decision, which on that occasion was the wrong one as he throws the ball out of bounds. That's as good as, as a, a defensive stop there for Jack Hudson. And as you mentioned earlier, Anthony Chester Phoenix doing a much better job packing the paint and helping, which we look back at the first half, we knew the floodgates was open and that was a layup. Evans trying to force his way in and he's got it back out. Shot clock is low. Jack this time attacking. Off oh, again on the offensive glass. Blocked by Green. And that's where the length comes into the advantage of the Giants there. Excellent work right there from David Hoof to get the offensive rebound, but he's contested by 6'8, 6'9 athletic bids inside to get the shot block. Green with the run up. Oh. Grabs the rebound. And these are some crucial minutes here for the Manchester Giants. How long can they survive with William Lee and Ramon Fletcher there on the bench? And from the other side, the Cheshire Queen has got to look to take advantage of that. Jack open to three. Off left. <laughs> Green just snatches that from his card. It's him a Another rebound here, 10 rebounds. It's his three. double double, that's why he grabs that one. <laughs> Here's Lewis, back iron for three. And Ulf doing a good job there to tip that to himself. Driving through in the foul is called. And both teams come into this fourth quarter a little bit slow offensively. Two minutes and neither team has scored. And Jack there with the aggressive drive and draws the foul. Side to open a little push in the back. William Lee. And that's a great call there. Great job again by David Alf. And you said it earlier that this is a guy that doesn't need the ball much and is great at doing the little things and the little things he has excelled in here tonight. Anderson gets it to Jack. He's blocked by Lee. Great play there from William Lee. This time timed it perfectly. He gets the block. Lewis under all sorts of pressure. Somehow comes away with the ball. But off. Snatches it off him. Wow. Great competitiveness there. David Hook comes up with it. And driving hard. That's going to be an offensive foul on Larry Austin. His second. There is zero rhythm from either team offensively at the moment. And players are just trying to make something happen. And it's not really working out. But you can also see the intensity, the, the intensity on the defensive end is increasing. Both teams understand the, the importance of this game. And I think it is the latter. Both teams have taken it up a, a, up a notch defensively, as you see there. Maceo Jack pounding Callum Jones there. Lee on the turnaround, and Ulf just got a little too far underneath him there, commits the foul. Yeah, it's a bad one too. Turnaround jump shot. You kind of want William Lee to have to make that one. But again, it's easier said than done, especially with the intensity of this game growing. Don't actually know as if he hits him, but referees seen enough contact there to call the foul. Well, this quarter it's 1-0. That's 
that's the first point of the fourth quarter. We have gone retro back to the old Man United <laughs> days, pre-BBL. And that's a guy that you don't want to give confidence. William Lee, remember, he was the player of the month. The first one handed out this season has missed 106 days when you include the blind injury and the ankle injury. And what could be for Manchester Giants if he was in the lineup more frequently this season? There's Archibald into the key and... He is fouled, so they will go to the line. First result of the evening is done in... Ooh. There's something going on on the Cheshire bench that the referee's been over to quickly have a word with Ben Thomas about. Well, the, the, initial, jumped up the initial foul was, was called on the floor, so the protest was there with the act of shooting, and I, I think it was an animated reaction there from the from the bench. Referee overturned the call and said it was you now shooting two. But I think the initial call there is uh, not what the, the Phoenix Benz wanted to see. Well, I was halfway through getting the result in Newcastle. It's finished the Eagles 71, the Sheffield Sharks 82, which means Sheffield Sharks have punched their ticket into the playoffs and they continue their proud record of never having missed. A playoff since they joined the BBL in 1994. And how about that with the Sheffield Sharks? We talked all season long about the retro offense that they had. A great job there by Atiba Lions, who just picked up Coach of the Month, making that adjustment, adjusting to the BBL, which is fast paced, and now the Sharks are off and running. Well, unbeaten in the month, which, uh, or in league play at least, which is why they uh, gave him that award. Is Robertson driving through? But what that does mean is there's only uh, one playoff place left up for grabs, and it will be the Plymouth or Newcastle that will take it. And who's your money on, Dan? Oh, I don't know to be honest with you. My money is almost on. It's going to come down to that last game. I know you. You say you're saying no. I don't to think that. they're going to make it because there's still two games behind and. Plymouth, they've been struggling, but they got a game at Surrey tomorrow night, and if they were able to pick that up... Yeah, if they pick that up, it's a long way back for, for Newcastle, but it could get to that point where Newcastle needs to not only win that last game at Plymouth, but need to win by 10 to claim the head-to-head -head as well. We'll be in Newcastle next week to see if they can get a, a victory over their uh, cross-the-border rivals from Caledonia. Should be a good one with uh, you and Kieran going head-to-head. Well, we all know how you guys like to give me a hard time about my Newcastle Eagles, so hopefully they're able to put on a good show next Friday night at Hershey Motors Arena. Here's Anderson. Along the baseline, nice pass, and all for the two-handed throwdown. Perfectly timed cut there from David Ulfrey, who's done that all game, being in the right place at the right time, and... Baseline penetration there, no look pass from Larry Austin Jr. Dunk finish from David Ulf. Here's Lee, off the mark. The uh, Knicks fans in the house letting him know that hit nothing. For cheering the team. I'm surprised they're not. I haven't heard a We Are Chester Jets song from the uh, world famous chances. Lewis steals it away. Robertson pushing hard. Back to Lee with the jump. That's good space in there for the Giants. Ran the floor well, and Ramon Fletcher makes the intelligent play there, giving it to his Duncan, six foot eight center, William Lee. Austin doing what he does best. And Austin saying, I don't need a fast break to do what I do as he knifes his way with the mini Euro step and finishes strong at the basket. This is the final five minutes, at least, of regulation. The way the score's been going, you wouldn't rule out overtime yet. Austin comes away with it. 
Here's Archibald in the corner, and he knocks down the three. It's a big one. Great pass there to find Archibald in the corner by Larry Austin Jr., who's pulling the strings offensively. That is a big shot to extend the lead to five. Fletcher high off the glass, and Jack pulls in the rebound. Great work there from Callum Jones just to tie up the ball there. Oh, great anticipation there. Possession still, possession arrow with Tetra Phoenix, so the ball will go back to them, but just a good competitive play there from Callum Jones. Well, if nothing else, it flips the arrow. You never yes. know what might happen yes. in the closing stages of this game. Here's Archibald again. Not this time. That's the Fletcher. I think he's going. He's going to give it to Doug Williams in the corner. It's a two-point game. Just like that, things change. If Archibald hits that shot, big change in this game. But instead, the ball is pushed. Get it to Doug Williams, who delivers. Anderson trying to get those points back. It's a little short. Williams from miles out, got it, Doug Williams! As we call him the sniper for a reason. One of the best three-point shooters in the league. Five feet from beyond the arc and says, take that. As the Manchester Giants now go back up by a point. And not only does he put points in the board, he hit big ones. He hit a couple big ones in the first quarter. And there he is with the biggest one yet. Great offensive rebound, but Chuck can't get it to go. And the Giants with the ball back. Dirk's going to go again here, is he? No, he's going to give it to Green instead. And Ulf with the foul. I think that's a good foul as well. Giants were in that flow, and you feel the Phoenix were scattering around there on defense. It wasn't much of a foul, no. was it? Well, if it was a good foul, and I'm not sure he was expecting it. There we go, but... Uh, Timeout called by Cheshire. 2.40 to go in a one point four game here. Well, this has a feeling of the sort of game that comes down to who scores last. <laughs> yeah, I think you got that right. And, and that's, if, if we're looking at it that way, I like the Manchester Giants tipping the edge over, but the only issue with that foul there is that now David Olsen has four, so I look for Ramon Fletcher to try to get inside the paint and force David Olsen to make a decision. You can see Nigel Lloyd in the background there wearing his Dick Nurse t-shirt in Manchester Giants days, of course, but Nigel famously paid for Nick in the playoff final we showed at half time. And a great Birmingham Bullets team alongside Tony Dorsey, who also wore the green of Manchester. Well, Fletcher, who is the superstar of the team these days, makes his way back out onto court, and, uh, well, the ball will go through his hands a lot in the remaining 2.40, it's fair to say. Well, it's thrown away. That is an absolute killer for a coach. Out of a timeout, you throw the ball straight out of bounds. And that's just a ball-head play there by William Lee when you got your point guard. Ramon Fletcher running to the ball. That's who hands I'm going to try to put the ball in in that situation there. Austin spinning, dropping it towards Ulf, but Lee's able to steal it. Well, Larry Austin's done a great job of 
distributing for his teammates in this fourth quarter. He made some big plays. He was the passer to Archibald's three in the corner to David Ulf's dunk. Fletcher high. Shot was changed by Jack. Archibald going right to the rim and finishing. What a finish that is from Amari Archibald. Excellent change of pace there from Archibald who went straight at the defender. And he was able to maintain his focus. Great finesse finish there. Finger rolled high enough to avoid the block from William Lee who was chasing that one down. Goodness me. That's a big time finish there. Able to take the contact and it's a game of inches and Manchester makes the layup down there. They go on three and Cheshire has to take the ball out. But Cheshire takes advantage. And he converts the three-point play. And it's a two-point game with two minutes to play here. Lee, big shot for three. Off the mark. Great rise from Jack to pull in the rebound. Yeah, it really was. And they're undersized there, but they're coming up with these big boards in big moments. And William Lee left, just looking to rectify his earlier mistake, but he misses the shot. And Cheshire's going to have an opportunity here now to extend their lead. Archibald trying to shake loose Williams. He can't do it. Round the screen, he gets some room. Oh, again, offensive rebounding. Jack for three. Not this time. And there's a foul on the rebound. It's on Fletcher as Austin is trying to go after the offensive rebound. Fletcher can't believe it. And because the ball was loose, it's going to be two free throws. It's a big call, Dan. You can see the frustrations there on Mon Fletcher's face. Watch him there. He's got his hand on his over his arm. And it's right in front of the referee. Austin might have sunk it a little bit, but Fletcher's arm being there gave him the opportunity. And it gives Larry Austin a chance from the free throw line. One percent free throw shooter on his BBL career, and he missed the first. Quickly threw the second one up there just to get a bit of rhythm there. I'm not sure that's within the laws of the game. I'm not sure it's against them either. Well, the only one that went in was the one that didn't count. Oh, and it's thrown away. Oh no, it's come off Anderson. Anderson says he didn't touch it. But the referee said he did. Wow, that was close, Dan. Let's have a look if we can see. As Green throws it out. Oh, it's hard to tell there. Oh, he's stolen away by Austin. But he couldn't quite keep it in play. And that will be, well, they'll talk it over. I think it's a Manchester ball. It is a Manchester ball. I like that, though, from Larry Austin Jr., the intensity. You're not going to bring that up early, and oh, Larry Ossinger just couldn't quite regain. Well, I think they've reset the shot clock, but I don't think Cheshire ever had hold of the ball to reset the shot clock. I think it should be at 22. And the referee is just at the table just to clarify what's going on. There's a lot going on at the minute here with 106 to go in a two-point game. And Vince McCauley is going to uh, pause proceedings for a little bit by calling a timeout. I think the timeout is to advance the ball. Well, at the minute, the shot clock is showing 16. We'll wait and see what it ends up being on the other side of this timeout. And if it is 16, that because it's a tenth of the second clock, that isn't an eight-second violation, but Vince will be able to advance the ball into the front court to avoid the shot clock violation. Well, it's being explained to him now. Okay, we've been given an explanation. Nine seconds had come off the shot clock. 
and they hadn't got the ball in the front court, so it's an eight second violation. So Manchester will come out of this timeout and it'll be a Cheshire ball, which is not what Vince was expecting when he called the timeout. It's going to be an eight second violation and Cheshire will get the ball back. Wow. That's a. Uh... I, I, I'm, I think I'm just as surprised as Vince McCauley's about to be too. And rightfully so. I mean, Cheshire Phoenix have been the team that have been piling on the pressure there, forcing the Manchester Giants into errors. It was a near turnover, and Giants were fortunate that Larry Austin Jr. didn't regain possession and lay the ball up. So again, this will be a, a you know, a, a, an element that the Phoenix have deserved. Wow. I wonder if Ben knew in the timeout because he would be drawing up defense rather than uh, the offense that they need right now. Williams is on the floor, but they're not in a rush yet. They want to take a lot of this 14 seconds if they can. It's a big screen by Orff. It's an illegal screen by Orff. And Green hits the deck hard. And Dave Orff is called for his fifth and final foul. It's a double whammy for the Phoenix there. Not only do they lose a possession there in the offensive foul, but also they lose David Oak, who's been very good for them. Oh, I don't know, Dan. I don't know. Sometimes when the bodies collide and the body hits the floor like that, it can influence the decision. I think Oak is set before Green has ran into him. It just looks worse than what it is. Well, Taj Green, fortunately, is back to his feet. And now, Ulf will go to the bench, replaced by Hudson, or at least he will be, in a minute's time, because first of all, Manchester have called another timeout. Still 83-85, but only 57.1 seconds remaining now well, I feel like this this is like a juice in tennis it keeps going advantage yeah, juice yeah, advantage yeah. juice this last minute minute and a half has lasted what feels like for an eternity in these little turnover of plays I've sort of snatched the advantage from one team to the next but now it's thanks to the Giants who are gonna draw something up here now to either try and level this game or go ahead well, second result of the evening, Caledonia have beaten Bristol 90 to 82, which means if Leicester win, they'll move into second, but with 12 seconds to go, Leicester are losing by two. Oh, another close one, down in the capital. Well, Vince McCauley, it'll be interesting to see 57 seconds here, could advance the ball into the front court. That's what he was trying to do last time. Yeah, he was trying to do it last time, but whether he'll choose to do it this time or not. Obviously, the difference of advancing the ball is 10 seconds off the shot clock. But he might want to go quick because he's trailing by two. It's one of those ones where you perhaps you want to put the ball in the hands of Ramon Fletcher to make the right decision. He's got 19 points and seven assists, but for me, I'm looking for Derek Williams. You've got to figure out a way to get him open. He's been that guy that's popped up in big moments when the Giants look like they're in a bit of bother, a bit of trouble. Well, they're not going to advance the ball. So they will get the full complement on the shot clock. Fletcher drops it off to Green, but it's knocked away by Anderson. And that will be two free throws because they're over the limit. Well, it was a well executed play by design. Ramon Fletcher there. Getting two defenders to come towards him. And there were hands there, a lot of active hands. Hard for me to distinguish whether that's a foul or not. But what it wasn't, it wasn't an easy dunk for Green. So Cheshire Phoenix have done enough there. Green's going to have to earn them now with two shots at the free throw line. 67% free throw shooter on the season. The first one is short. It was five for five for the free throw line before that shot.
Oh, he's missed them both. And Cheshire are going to milk the clock here. 24 seconds and a score would be perfect for Ben Thomas and his team. If you don't foul, you have to get a stop. This has to be a defensive stop here for the Giants. The Phoenix score here. Jack steps on the line. Manchester do get the stop. 23.9 seconds to go. So the shot clock will be off. Goodness me, another error here for the Phoenix. A painful one as well. Oh, a bounce. Well, a two to tie, a three to win. Fletcher has the ball. Fletcher goes. Robertson is fouled. Oh, he almost got that to go, but he will shoot two. Wow. Look at this. Robertson along that baseline. And really, that's a good resistance there from Maceo Jack. Roberson's a 58% free throw shooter. Again, this isn't one of his strengths, Dan. Right, 64 for 109 this season from the free throw line. First one is short, but he just gets the roll. Now with a chance to tie it. They've also got Lee and Green, by the way, who are both athletic and bigger than the people in front of them. If he does miss, he does miss, but Archibald comes in for the rebound. They can run the clock here, we need a foul, Manchester need a foul. Well, they lost some time there. Well, there will be two free throws for that one. And it's... Uh, Archibald he hasn't really shot a load of three throws since he's been hit you can see he's saying foul foul but he's three of three tonight test of nerves now for both teams back and forth trip to the free throw line first one is good his teammates have faith in him, nobody lining up. Well, actually, Anderson might come in to line up now for the rebound, just in case. 6.5, it's a two-point... Austin's going to go in for the rebound as well now, so he's got a little longer to think about it. Archibald, I think, is saying, don't worry about it, I'm just going to score. Vince McCauley will try and draw up a play to force overtime with 6.5 seconds to go. Big shots there from Archibald. He's had a really good game. That's 18 points personal for him. And timeout called there and both. Just look a little, looking little confused there. Well, the uh, game in London has finished. London 83, Leicester 81. So as you were in the race for second place, with both Leicester and Bristol losing tonight. But it's the race for fourth place that we're concentrating on here. And it's the Manchester Giants who were in pole position coming in to this game, who are in danger of dropping one here and dropping the head-to-head -head. and that will become more important because Cheshire will actually move level on losses and only one, one win behind unless Manchester can find a way of sending this game to overtime well then they'd be deserved too if Phoenix can figure out a way to get out of this building with a win because since the devastating BBO trophy final they went on a two game winning streak and staring now at a third they've been man down they've had players season ended injuries still they remain unified as a group and find themselves three points up here in you know a difficult environment to play in here at Bellevue
Well, Tyrant Williams is the obvious choice, but everybody out there can shoot a three. As far as Manchester concerned, here is Dirk. He backs away. He fires off for overtime. He misses. And Cheshire have the ball in Cheshire at one. What a victory for the Phoenix. And Ben Thomas is absolutely delighted with his team. They gutsed it out with two men down, but they found a way to win against their near rivals. Well, Ben Thomas, of course, maybe experiencing flashbacks from up in the Emirates Arena in Glasgow. Last second shot to win the game, but not on this occasion. The defense was good enough. It was a heavily contested shot. Derek Williams had to shoot the ball from quite a distance out. Missed everything. And Cheshire Phoenix, what a gutsy win. Well, all the noise coming from the Knicks fans behind their bench who are celebrating a local derby win and an important one at this time of year. Everything plays out in terms of the standings. And that is a really courageous win for them. You throw that on the back of the, the way they won that game against Sheffield. We're basically finishing the game with five players. Obviously, T going out, season-ending injury. Just incredible heart and commitment to just keep on going. It really is, and sometimes a, a difficult experience can bring a group closer together, and that seems to be the case here for the Cheshire Phoenix, who another valiant win here tonight. Well, Cheshire Phoenix, in some ways, the numbers as we look at them, the one that matters the most is the two digits at the top, 84, 87. They found a way to, to grind it out, but the steals that they were forcing all game, the pressure they put on them was key. It was, and even right down to the last plays there, you know, the eight-second half court there, you know, the, the pressure remained throughout, and... You know, the, the fourth quarter was just a, a dog fight. It was 13 to 14, and it was just who had the, the larger will. You had guys jumping out of the gym for rebounds, fighting for loose balls. What a competitive fourth quarter. Well, Larry Austin, 18 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds. He's with Drew. Larry, you heard the stat line there. The game nip and tuck. Playoff atmosphere all night long. When did you begin to feel that you can actually steal this one? Man, uh... They made they run from the jump, you know, uh, and then we, we came back into the game. And, you know, I think we won those first two, uh, first, second quarter, third quarter, and things like that, you know. Uh, once we got back into the game, we thought we could win it all, man. So it's playing hard and sticking together, you know, just battling through adversity. And you guys are known for your defense. What was Coach Ben Thomas saying in that final timeout before that last defensive stop? Just play straight up. No fouls, no nothing. Don't let anybody go to the rim or get a three-point shot. Just play on straight up. And that's what we did, man. We could play anybody straight up. And uh, we just got to stop, man. And, and finally, we've seen it all week long, the shot there at the trophy final. You're out without two starters, but you find a way to get it done. Talk about the resilience of this group. Man, we got a bunch of dogs on our team, man. We got a bunch of guys that want to play, that play hard, you know, uh, and just have, a, just have a heart. You know, they play with passion, you know. When we got that, you know, it's hard, always uh, hard over height, you know. So we lost our two bigs, but we still come out and play. So we still going to play hard and just come out here and have fun. Well, speaking of dog, I call you the pit bull, and you got it done tonight. Congratulations. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Shout out to the fans. Plays with a smile on his face. Plays with such energy and such effervescence. 18 points, 8 assists, 5 boards, 2 steals. Every time we see a Larry Austin stat line, he's covering all bases. So he just completely willed that win. You know, he, I saw him you know, talking trash to the fans. He was just copping the moment. It's just great to see him finding a way, being that captain for us, team, being that leader, and taking him to a, a, a nice victory. I think it's instrumental, that kind of character, isn't it? Particularly after the trophy loss that we talked about. It's been really impressive for Cheshire now in the league, how they've rebounded. And having a player like that, it just brings everyone up around him to his level. He has so much energy. You know, his charisma is palpable. You know, he just finds a way to win. And like I said... He, he takes that responsibility personally and delivers every single time. He had a big night. Jamel Anderson as well was superb. We talked about Jamel's experience, particularly after that trophy loss, didn't we? Uh, and how key that was going to be as far as the Phoenix running was concerned. He took care of business on the court, across the board. 
uh, as well. 19.7 boards. He had three steals out of that. 11 team steals for the Phoenix, which, of course, is a key part of their MO. No, definitely the key part. And, you know, I, I talked about his three-point shot lacking. He only ended up making one, but he did everything else correctly. He does, he does a great job defensively that people take for granted as well. Just a real disruptor in this game. You say only one in a three-point victory. Yeah. <laughs> He'll call himself the game winner then. So big win for Phoenix. What does this tell you about the playoff race? It just tells you it's so wide open. You know, everyone's beating everybody. There's a lot of games left to finish this. You, you have no idea where the standings are going to end other than number one and, and, and last place with Surrey Scorchers. It is all to play for as we get close to the playoffs. The Phoenix are right in the thick of it. Let's hear from their coach, Ben Thomas. He's with Drew. Coach, a local derby, retro night in a physical battle. We saw the look on your face at the final buzzer. What did this win mean to you and your group? Everything, you know, stood here, this exact spot, you know, in November or October, whenever that game was, that was hard. Um, you know, we haven't won here for a while. It's a, a tough place to come and play, especially Giants are playing this year. So, you know, credit to our guys, you know, down on numbers, but... Everyone played the way they were supposed to. The scout worked perfectly. So, yeah, really, really happy. And talk about down on numbers, the shot that we've seen all week long. Talk about the grit and determination of your group. Look, we said at the start, you know, before the game, it was, um, you know, we have, we have options, OK? Whenever you face adversity, you can either battle on and go through it or give up. We've had, you know, a lot of that over recent weeks. David Sloan, one of them. Taj going down, one of them. Will Neighbor going down, one of them. This group have got a lot of character, all right? And uh, a lot of balls, that's what I'm going to say. They play hard. And finally, the trophy final, the fans come out and drove. They're packed there behind your bench. What message would you want to leave with them tonight? And we say it a lot. Obviously, everyone, every team thinks the same, but I really do believe that we've got the best fans in the league. You know, this place was loud at the start of the game. It was very quiet, apart from that little section over there at the end. So, you know, credit to them. And that win was for them as well. Well, it felt like playoff atmosphere. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, Drew. Cheers. Now, I'm not going to get sucked into who's got the best fans in the BBL, but I will say that every time we watch Cheshire, home and away, it seems, their fans represent, make noise. They're such a diehard, passionate, literate bunch, aren't they? They are a part of this club. You know, they're they, they embedded into the club's infrastructure, and that's a great thing to see. You know, they epitomise that community feel, and it's, it, you know, they travel far and away. It's just great to see. Coach Thomas referenced it in the interview with Drew. They were short stacked tonight. That makes their victory tonight all the more impressive, doesn't it? Yeah, I was really impressed with Ulf, especially, you know, stepping up. He's had a, quite a rough season coming back from injury, but he just made those little intangible plays, the big the big blocks, you know, the, 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 the offensive rebounds, just everything else. Everyone just stepped up when they needed to. OK, we heard from Ben Thomas. Let's hear from Vince. He's got to be disappointed with that defeat, particularly given the way the Giants started. Let's find out his take on the game now. He's with Drew. Coach. This place was gr a great spectacle for British basketball, but unfortunately your men came up short. One for four to, from the free throw line in the last minute. But where was this game lost? <laughs> well, you've already pointed to one of the biggest factors of, uh, of why we lost the game. But, I mean, to be honest, I didn't feel, despite the fact that we were up earlier in the first quarter, I didn't play, feel we were playing our own basketball game. I think they took more three-pointers than we did. They made more three-pointers than we did. Um, and I, I don't know what we were waiting for. By the time we came to the party, I think it was a little late. And at home with an opportunity to solidify fourth place, is it a missed opportunity? Oh, 100% it's a missed opportunity. And what I preach to my players is whatever opportunities in life come to you, you don't know if you're ever going to get another one. So take the one that's right there. And I think we've missed a chance there. But hey, we still have four games to go and who knows what might happen. And you got a chance to bounce back in five days against the Lions. You're 0-3 on the season, but do you feel like they're a team that you can win? Well, we, we come to every game expecting to win. Um, I think it just comes down to how we play. I mean, we're very much an emotional-led team. Um, and if our minds are set and we're ready to go, uh, we'll be OK. But when we're uh, thinking about other things, you get results like this. But congratulations to the, to the Phoenix or the Jets or wherever we're calling them today. And I thought their fans were impressive. Well, if that's an appetizer to the playoffs, the BBL has something in store. Thanks Absolutely. for your time, Vince. Thank you. Big smile on his face, and you can see why, despite the defeat, he knows they're going to be a dangerous proposition in the playoffs. If they come to play, you know, they, they, they have the pieces, you know, they, they can put up numbers. But, you know, I just think that that whole outscoring teams is a very hard thing to do in the playoffs, especially when you're such a short stack C, uh, team playing mega minutes. 
and then at the same time having to bring that energy every game. It's a, it's a tough ask. A lot of minutes, a lot of miles on the clock. We compare that to London. We talked about this last week, didn't we? How, and obviously they've got a deep roster, but the metronomic management, the time management there of Coach Schmidt, Sam Decker, the player with the most minutes, at around 25 on average this season. You look at how many Manchester players are hitting over 30 routinely, but it is a dangerous five and they can go with anyone in the BBL. It's going to be fascinating to watch them in the playoffs. And when they've got players like Dirk Williams, anything is possible in a knockout tournament. He was the leading scorer on the court this evening. 20 points and he got hot from three in the second half. I thought that was going to swing it for the Giants. You know, sometimes you look at Dirk Williams, all you can say is wow. You know, he, he just finds a way. Guys, like I talk about his elegance, the way he plays, he's got such a nice stroke. His jump shot looks so pure every single time you think it's going to go in. You landed him from downtown, he was 100% from closer as well. So a big night for him, but it was all in vain. Uh, the Cheshire Phoenix taking care of business and landing play of the day. Now, big man, we didn't get, uh, you didn't get your chance, of course, with our plays of the week at halftime because we went all retro. So here you go. You know, this is what I live for. Look at this. That is absolutely <laughs> disgusting by Anderson. <laughs> Sneaking baseline on a Taj Green, though. No, great shot walker. Wow. I'm going to have to say it again. That was disgusting. We're going to see it three times, and he get a double disgusting for Jamal Anderson. <laughs> and he enjoyed that, didn't he? Mind you, it was a tough call. There were three or four on the short. I had, I had five lined up for yeah. that. You know, so that was, that was a tough ask, but, you know, Jamal Anderson pulled through in the end. We've got to get the plays of the week rolling soon. Surely next week, right? Are you, <laughs> he's definitely going to put that in to our producers. Right, let's uh, remind ourselves of the scores from around the BBL tonight. Key games going on, and this will put a smile on your face, Kieran. The Gladiators taking down Bristol. These results have gone kind of their way, right, Caledonia, as far as the, the table is concerned and the playoff seedings are concerned. We'll see that in a moment. Tight game between the current champs and the champions elect. London, of course, who locked down the title last week. 83-81, they beat Leicester. Sheffield, they can uh, guarantee their playoff spot, uh, have guaranteed, I should say, their playoff spot with that win. 82-71, the Eagles slipping out of contention and confirmation of the three-point win for Cheshire in our Northwest Derby, which means this is what it does for the table. London, obviously, champions. Bristol stay in second. Let's have two games on them and just two points behind. Caledonia in fourth now. They leapfrog Manchester with that win, and they've got a game in hand on the Giants. They played the same number of games as the Cheshire Phoenix with a two-point advantage. Sheffield as I say, confirmed as a playoff team. And Newcastle, well, they've played a game more than Plymouth now. And even though Plymouth have been in free fall over the last month, they have a four-point cushion over the Eagles in that run-in. More action across the BBL this weekend. Plymouth taking on Surrey. You would think if Plymouth lock that win down, they will be absolutely in the box seat as far as the playoff, the eighth playoff spot is concerned. Uh, they're playing doubling down on Sunday against Caledonia. Leicester take on Newcastle. Tough game for the Eagles. Sheffield, Cheshire and Manchester, London. That will be a must-watch game. You can catch all of those, of course, on the BBL's YouTube channel. And you can catch more action right here on Sky Sports. It is coming thick and fast as we build up momentum for the postseason. Eagles, Gladiators from Newcastle next week. That is our game. Cannot wait to see the newly crowned trophy champs in action. I bet you can't either. Kieran and Drew Lasker, of course, will be present and correct. Definitely pushing for that Newcastle win. A late burst. If they can run the table, well, they might just make it 7.30. Sky Sports action. That is all she wrote here in Manchester. We promised you it would be electrifying. We promised you it would be must-watch. And both teams didn't disappoint. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.